Welcome back. This week, the U.S. hit a milestone. More than 100 million Americans have gotten at least one COVID-19 vaccine dose. At the same time, CDC Director Rochelle Walensky issued an emotional warning of impending doom as case counts continue to rise, personally reaching out to governors to plead with them to reinstate restrictions. Twelve states have seen their highest case counts in two months, and states are racing to get ahead of new variants, which are spreading rapidly by speeding up their own vaccine rollout. But is that enough? Joining me now is Dr. Michael Osterholm. He's the director of the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy at the University of Minnesota. Uh, Dr. Osterholm, the last time you were on, um, the metaphor was we are in the eye of the hurricane, that basically things were looking, felt rosy, and you said, hey, this is going to get worse. Well, do you believe we're in the midst of this fourth surge? And are we still sitting on a Category 5, or do you think this is a a manageable fourth surge. Well, thank you, Chuck, for having me again. And first of all, let me say that at this time, we really are in a Category 5 hurricane status with regard to the rest of the world. At this point, uh, we will see in the next two weeks the highest number of cases reported globally uh, since the beginning of the pandemic. In terms of the United States, we're just at the beginning of this surge. We haven't even really begun to see it yet. We have had over the course of the past year a surges of cases that occur in the upper Midwest and the Northeast, and they subside. Then we see big increases in cases through all the southern Sun Belt states. Then it subsides in the Northeast and Midwest come back again. And we're now, I think, in that cycle where the upper Midwest is just now beginning to start this fourth surge. And I think it was a wake-up call to everyone yesterday when Michigan reported out 8,400 new cases. And we're now seeing increasing number of severe illnesses, ICU hospitalizations, in individuals who are between 30 and 50 years of age who have not been vaccinated. Uh, I want to actually put up some CDC um, headlines from the week because there was a little bit of confusion. And I want you to try to clear it up. And I get... There's guidelines, and then there's there's uh, interpreting the guidelines. You know, we had the CDC reiterating that Americans should limit their travel as um, as the U.S. hits 30 million cases, and then of course they say fully vaccinated people can travel in the U.S. without tests or quarantines. Then we had the CDC data suggesting that vaccinated folks don't carry or spread virus. Then there's some scientists said, whoa, 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 we don't know if that's the case per se. And then there's this. The president of Argentina apparently has COVID after getting the Sputnik vaccine. So clear up this confusion for us. And is the CDC, um, should it should they be clear on what our guidelines are? Well, we all want to be clear. And I do give uh, the uh, director of the CDC, Rochelle Winsky, great credit for, I think, being a truth teller right now. But let me just give an example on the airplane flight. Uh, when you get vaccinated, it's like buying a fireproof suit that works 90 to 95 percent of the time, but it doesn't work all the time. So why want to walk into a big fire if you don't have to? So what they are basically saying is, is yes, if you are vaccinated, you can start opening up a lot of things in your life that you couldn't do before. But now, if you know you're going to be walking into a fire, why do it? So I think their message was completely consistent, although it may have confused the public. So get vaccinated. That's your fireproof suit. But don't put yourself in harm's way unnecessarily because it's not going to be foolproof. I think in terms of all the other recommendations we're looking at right now with the public, that's the challenge we have. And please note, this B117 variant, the one that we've talked about, the yeah. one from the UK, just as we've talked about it, how it's now 50 to 100 percent more infectious, it causes more severe illness 50 to 60 percent of the time. This is almost like having a whole new pandemic descend upon us. The only good news is our vaccines do work against it. I want to ask you about a a mutation within these mutations. It's, I guess, nicknamed the Eek mutation. And it's, I guess, it's less like a variant. And it's a, it seems to be, it's a a calling card of these more virulent, uh, I guess, more more intense variants here. Um, How concerned are you that this will be the, that will get around our vaccines? Well, I'm concerned about all the variants. Before November, we really didn't understand that this virus would mutate as it does, and that in terms of its mutations, it can do one of three things. One, it can be much more infectious. Two, it can cause more severe illnesses. Or three, in some instances, it can actually evade the immune protection from the vaccine or from having previously been infected. The ick that you're talking about, that particular variant uh, addition, is one that does evade the protection of the vaccine or natural infection. Not totally, but it surely compromises them. We're very worried about this. But, Chuck, I'm even more worried about 
uh, what's coming down the pike over mm -hmm. the next uh, several years. Right now, if you look at uh, the vaccine distribution around the world, 10 countries have received about 80 percent of the vaccine. 30 countries have not even seen a drop mm -hmm. of it. If we continue to see this virus spread throughout the low and middle income countries unfettered, they're going to spit out variants over the course of the next years that in each and every instance could challenge our vaccines. This is why we need not only a U.S. response, right. but we need a global response to get as many people in low and middle income countries vaccinated so we don't risk the actual uh, capability of our own vaccines right here. Now, this is about vaccine security yeah. with these new variants. Um, I how are we going to live our lives for the next year? Are we going to have, should we be wearing masks? Are we going to be getting a third vaccine shot in the next six months? Um, is, is whatever pre-pandemic normal was never coming back? I don't think so. I think we surely have that opportunity to come back. But in the meantime, please understand this B117 variant is a brand new ball game. In fact, right here in Minnesota, we're now seeing the other aspect of this B117 variant that hasn't been talked much about, and that is the fact that it infects kids very readily. Unlike the previous strains of the virus, we didn't see mm. children under eighth grade get infected often or they were not frequently very ill. They didn't transmit to the rest of the community. That's why I was one of those people very strongly supporting right. reopening in-class learning. B117 turns out on its head. These kids now are really uh, major challenges in terms of how they transmit. The fact that I could sit here and talk about 749 schools yeah. in Minnesota in the last two weeks now having B117 activity. So I, the so message you would, is we have right to get now, through this you would close schools, and this means we're going to have to reconsider what we're doing yeah. now and how we're doing that. But that's all to get us to this summer. I do believe, and I give the administration great okay. credit for how it's bringing forward vaccine as quickly as possible. But at the same time, we're not going to have nearly enough in the next six to eight weeks to get through this surge. And we're going to have to look at other avenues to do that, just yeah. as every other country in the world who's had a B117 surge has had to do. And that's what yeah. Dr. Lewinsky was talking about in all honesty. Well, and what you just said there about in-person school and what's happening with this variant, I think a lot of, a lot of scientists and the CDC will all be taking that into uh, major consideration what's going on there. That is a, a, a very uncomfortable development. Dr. Michael Holstrom, as always, thank you for coming on and uh, giving your straight talk to us. Thank you.